Welcome to Ortho Eval Pal, where we help you build confidence in your orthopedic evaluation and management skills. Good morning, everybody. My name is Paul from Ortho Eval Pal, and this is Andy. And um, we have a, a great video this morning. And the first thing I want to say is thanks to Andy because I really, really appreciate um, you know showing us uh, your particular issue here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start by asking you a few questions and then we'll kind of go into the evaluation part of this and then we'll talk about, you know, what do we do with you from here. So, how old are you first of all, Andy? 50. 50, okay. And um, you've been having a shoulder problem. Which shoulder? Yes, my left shoulder. Okay, and how long has that been going on? Uh, at least a couple months. Okay. Now, did you ever do anything to hurt yourself? No. This just no, kind of... It just, I thought it was a pulled muscle and... Just progressively got worse? Yes, yeah. So, not only did your pain get worse, but your motion started to get worse? Yes. Okay. So, when Andy first came to see me, um, we noticed right away that he was in a lot of pain. And we started about, about a couple of weeks ago, right? Right. And um, so, what I want to show you today is uh, Andy has an adhesive capsulitis. I want to talk to you, number one, about the common risk factors for adhesive capsulitis who's more apt to get it, and Andy doesn't really fall into that, but that's okay because we still see it in folks who don't have all the risk factors. Um, and then I'll show you a little bit of evaluation. So the first thing I'm gonna ask Andy to do is if you could go ahead and try to lift those arms straight up in front of you as high as you can. And if the right one goes all the way, let it go all the way. Good, and this is better than a week ago. He had uh, less than 90 degrees when he first came to see us. Now back down by your side, and I'd like to see you bring your arms out to the side this time, as high as you can go. Will the other one go higher? Yeah. Yeah, okay, great. And back down. Now, let's have you take your right hand and reach up behind your head. Okay, now we'll put that one down. Let's reach up behind your head with this one. So we look at functional range of motion. Very, very painful. Okay, and back down. Can we reach up behind the back with the right one? Up this way. Yes. Yeah, good. And we'll do the same with this arm. So he was only getting to his greater trochanteric bursa a week ago, and now he's getting back to his upper glute, which is much better. All right, great. So the thing with adhesive capsulitis is, number one, if you are diabetic, you're at high risk. If you are female, you're at higher risk. If you're a female around um, menopause, you're at high risk. And then the other thing we've noticed is that males of northern European descent seem to have a higher risk of adhesive capsulitis and you'll notice an association between Dupuytren's contractures and adhesive capsulitis. Now, the thing I want to show you today, and this is what really tells us that he has an adhesive capsulitis, is that when he actively lifts his arm in any motion, I will not be able to push him much further than that, okay? So let's have you straighten your arm up and bring it right up over the top as far as you can. So actively, he hits an end point, and passively, I might get five to 10 degrees and I can't get any further than that, okay? So we're gonna bring that arm down now. I'm gonna have you keep that elbow right there. Now I want you to turn your hand out toward me. So he has about five degrees of external rotation right now, and if I were to push him, I can't get much further than that. It takes me about five, ten minutes of stretching with him to gain another, you know, five to ten degrees and relax. So if we were to take his arm up here, where he's quite limited, he's quite acutely tender. We're going to bring this hand down, okay? And I'm going to let you bring it down. That's quite painful, isn't it? It is. Okay? Yes. So he has limitation in all motions, okay? And with a limitation in all motion, that's a classic sign of adhesive capsulitis. Especially if he can actively bring it to a range and you can't get much further than about maybe 5 to 10 degrees more than that. Now, how do we know that he didn't tear his rotator cuff? Well, number one, he didn't really have a mechanism. He's a young guy. He's a healthy guy. Um, we had an x-ray just to make sure that he didn't develop something like a pathologic fracture or something like that, which I have seen. And the next thing is um, I want to kind of rule out, you know, if he has a rotator cuff tear or not. So I'm going to have you hold that arm right there. Don't let me push it inward. So he offers me great resistance into external rotation. We're going to bring the arm out to the side toward me. Hold it right here. Hold tight. Hold, hold, hold. He gives me good abduction. And we're going to go straight ahead this time. And I want you to hold it right here. Give me everything you have. And he gives me excellent flexion. So he shows me good integrity of his rotator cuff. Um, and the other thing that we notice is that 
he didn't have a lot of palpable tenderness the first day I saw him. And he doesn't have any, you know, real significant palpable tenderness. This is deeper in the capsule, okay? So, what are we going to do with Andy? As far as, um, as uh, you know, helping him out on a primary care level, uh, we, we requested a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory to help decrease the inflammation in that shoulder. We started to develop some light range of motion exercises so that we can start to move him a little better. We're not going to ice him because he doesn't have a significant amount of pain, you know, right now. He can ice if he's sore toward the end of the day, but we've been heating him so that we can start to mobilize his shoulder. And the good thing about frozen shoulders or adhesive capsulitis is that they get better. Okay, very, very few people, and I've seen hundreds of these, very, very few people do not get better. So if he does not show improvement over the course of a month and shows zero gains in range of motion, then we will consult with an orthopedic surgeon about um, you know, the possibilities of injection, manipulation under anesthesia, or lysis of adhesion through arthroscopy. So those are other options. We very seldomly ever have to go there though. Uh, most of the times people will get better. Now, if you had a frozen shoulder and we just left you alone and did nothing with you, this would probably get better and the literature shows that this would get better in the course of a year and a half to two years as far as your pain goes. But that's a long time and Andy's a busy guy, he does construction, he needs that arm. Um, the, the problem with just leaving it alone is that he'll never gain full complete range of motion but he may be pain free in the range that he has. I'm a stickler for obtaining full range of motion in the shoulder as much as possible because the shoulder is very finicky with how it moves and if it doesn't move just right it's gonna you're gonna develop an early erosion of the joint and you're gonna end up with early breakdown and arthritis. So um, we have him in a, in a physical therapy program he's taking a non steroidal anti-inflammatory we're having him um, avoid repetitive motion type activities and um, we tell folks, and the most important thing you can tell a person with adhesive capsulitis is these are the expectations. This could take a long time, okay? Somewhere between three to six months of therapy is, is possible. Um, you could be, you know, six months to a year before you feel like, hey, everything is really coming around nicely. But you've already shown some gains in about a week and a half to two weeks, so I'm really happy with that. Um, and I think you'll continue to show those gains. Home exercise program is going to be the key here so you maintain your flexibility. And then we really don't hit a lot of strengthening until his motion gets better. So um, again, Andy, I really want to thank you for uh, more uh, tidbits and notes and bullet points on adhesive capsulitis. Go to www.orthoevalpal.com and uh, check out our website and you can go to the shoulder section. You'll see uh, all kinds of great information and uh, information about uh, future courses that we'll be giving. Thanks. We hope you've enjoyed this video, and for more awesome content, go to orthoevalpal.com. Can't wait to see you there.